So we've got a brand new five-speed transmission in the rally car with the front and center diff. So that leaves just the rear differential to take care of. So here I've got a brand new Cusco Type RS. So that's the spring type, limited slip rear. And that's going to be going into this. So yes, we're putting a $1,200 differential into something that looks like it came out of the lake. Uh, we'll be doing some cleanup along the way. And uh, so we're gonna start here by getting the diff out of the way and we'll get this back cover off, get this strained, and then take the side caps off and get the old differential out. So that actually looks very reasonably clean inside. There's a little bit of junk on the drain plug but not too bad. So I'm going to say that's a good start for our build. So as this drains here, I'm going to take off the, the side caps. These are very prone to snapping. They're smaller bolts and they usually get a lot of corrosion. So I don't want to do it with an impact. I'm just going to very gently do this with a wrench. And I'll flip this up the drain while we're messing around with that. So I've got all the bolts off, I'm just going to lightly tap this with a rubber mallet and I can see the ring coming out now. So this is what that looks like. Flip this over, we'll do that for the other side. And there's the right side. So, same thing, an O-ring riding on the collar. And before I get too far, I will just mark these so that I don't get them mixed. So there we go. There's our housing with the pinion gear and our old differential. And we are ready to get this out of the way and start assembling our, our new unit. So I just wanted to show that pulling this apart, we did get a bit of a surprise in that there's a spring loaded aftermarket locker in the spider gears here. And you can actually see the the center pin has been welded in and ground down. I'm not quite sure why we would do that when we when we have the roll pin keeping it in place. Uh, it looks like there's some, some damage to the locker assembly too. Um, so luckily, we don't have to use anything out of this but the, the ring gear. So we're gonna clean that up, take this off, and we can discard this center section and move on. But despite all that, it still looks really clean on the inside of the housing. There's, there's really not that many shavings. Uh, the bearings were, were nice and clean. There's no wear on the teeth. So we're good to move forward. Okay, so we're ready to start reassembly now with the new diff. Um, so I've got that ready to accept the new bearings. And um, the way we're going to put these on is I've got a bearing driver here that I'm gonna use to start the bearings onto the diff on both ends. But what you need is a cup or a recess to drive against the inner bearing race um, past the, um, the top of uh, this actual uh, diameter on the differential. Now this is something that is really, really easy to da damage this bearing cage and, uh, and basically scrap the bearing right out the bat as you install it. So what I like to do is actually I use old bearing races. This is an inner bearing race that's been cut, relieved. So that's the same diameter. So I can safely tap on this and drive the bearings home. And then because I've got this cut, I don't run the risk of this um, uh, pushing and press fitting onto the, the actual diameter of the diff here. So I can just really just take a, um, a flathead screwdriver or a, uh, a pry bar 
and pull this bearing apart and then pop it off afterwards. But then I know that I don't run the risk of damaging this, this actual bearing cage here. So I'll tap it down as far as I can get it with just the bearing driver. And I'll check to make sure that I'm driving that on square. So there I'm as far down as I can get it. So now the inner bearing race is flush with the top of the diff, but I gotta go farther. I gotta seat it all the way against the step on that differential. So I'll get my sacrificial race in place and then I'll gently start tapping that down. And that's working beautifully. And there you can hear the tone change. And this bearing is fully seated. Now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing. We want to be really, really careful when we flip this over not to damage this cage by hitting it and pushing it off. So, I'll actually hold it up on that lower bearing race as I start to drive this one home. Just so I have that much less risk of damaging something. And that looks pretty good. So, that's new bearings on. This is ready to go, I'll set that aside. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, the end caps here. So, I marked these when they came apart, and these have shims, they're not gaskets, they're shims, that have to be kept with the sides they go to. So this is what determines the, the, the pretension on the bearings for the rear diff. You'll note that unlike the uh, front differential or transmission, this doesn't have like a sun gear um, or a ribbed ring that you can actually adjust to, to tighten or loosen that preload. This is all done through static shims. So what happens if you use um, OEM bearing replacements is oftentimes uh, the tolerances are so good that the bearing stack up is the same on either side and you can use the same shim stack and put it back together if you mark the sides and kept careful track of, uh, of how everything goes together, which I have here. And I did actually verify on the bench that the bearing stack up was the same between the old and the new bearings. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the same shim setup and I'm not going to touch anything else. We have our cleaned and painted differential. It's no longer looking like something that I found in the bottom of the lake. And we can just do a quick test fit. So I am told that this new differential might require grinding of these two nubs here in the case because essentially with these Cusco diffs we have a thicker flange and more protruding uh, bolt heads here. So let's, let's just take a look and see if that's the case. And I can see that yes, in order to swing this in, I'm likely going to have to grind those two nubs, but definitely, We've got some interference here because of this larger diff. And just to show you the difference, here's the old differential. And it's I've split the flanges here on this VLSD, but you can see that we've got much less thickness here, whereas this has a very proud shoulder and it's holding the bolts up. So that's the cause of our um, uh, contact. 
So when we do this, we're gonna, we're gonna grind this away with an angle bit. We gotta be very, very careful not to get any metal shards in the exposed pinion bearing because we really, really do not want to deal with the front half of this assembly. We want to leave the pinion bearing and all the, the tolerances and, and preload uh, as it is um, to really save ourselves some time with this job. So we've got to cover this up and seal this very, very well before we start grinding away at this. So we'll do that next and we'll come back um, after we've got the, the clearance made. So I'll bring the camera in and show you exactly what we took away on this. Okay, so we finished up with the grinding here. Let me just lift that up and show you. So we've ground those two nubs almost completely flat with the surrounding area. I'll try to get a good angle on that and I'll tip it up. But those are protrusions for the actual uh, bolt holes here, so you you don't want to just grind way too deep. You don't you don't need too much more than than getting them mostly flat here. And so now we'll go to slip this diff in. Smaller side first. And we're gonna rotate it past those nubs we ground down. And there's the diff sitting in place. All right, so now I've got some assembly lube on this. I'm going to put this cover back on in the same orientation it was in when it came off. So I've got that actually marked. And we want it to have the same clocking. So the first one's gonna be easy. And we'll just gently tap it into place. Alright, now we're getting close. Make sure our clocking's right. And you can still get brand new hardware from Subaru. These are like 67 cents a piece or something like that. Uh, well worth it to just go down to a dealership and order these or get them offline off of uh, several different sites to offer them. And the torque spec on these is super light. It's eight foot pounds. So it's really, really easy to over torque these. So I'm gonna get these all on and torqued in and we'll move on to the other side. Okay, there's side one done. Luckily side two is a little easier. We can just Sit it on its side here. I'm going to put some assembly lube on these bearings. And all over myself, apparently. And then I'm going to sit this in place. So this side, you're going to be wanting want to be careful when you're tapping it in and make sure that you're not tapping against the bearing or doing any damage or any bad thing. Once the diff is all back together and the side covers are tightened, this is where we're going to check um, the contact pattern um, and we're also going to check preload. Now I'm not going to go over how to do um, the preload checks here, you can do that with a dial indicator. There's, there's plenty of videos online about that. I will show the contact pattern in the end and, um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how that looks on this particular diff. And then once I verified that, I'm going to put the axle seals in. I can put the rear cover on and this is good to go in the car. 
So this is gonna be really hard to see without pulling the camera down, but what I'm seeing is contact in the middle of the tooth profile on the load side and um, slightly towards the, the toe or, or inboard side. Um, and that is gonna shift outboard with load. So you don't wanna see it exactly centered to my understanding. You want it more towards the, the ID um, when you're under a no load condition. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm happy with the backlash numbers checked with an indicator on, on both the tooth backlash and the, the side to side um, preload of the diff. So I'm gonna call this done. I'm gonna put the cover on the back and I have a lube blocker seal so we don't need any RTV or anything. It's got built-in gasket around the seal. Um, and we're gonna torque this down. The rear cover bolts are 21 foot pounds. Again, brand new hardware from Subaru. These were like a dollar a piece for brand new bolts with uh, lock washers. And this thing will be ready to go in the car. So we'll finish this up and we'll get this drivetrain swap done.